uh, is uh, height is the one you probably want uh, to set default um, for your images. Okay, next we have the customer details. And in here is basically the information you want to collect for from your customers. So do you want, when someone is creating a new account, do you want to ask them for their gender? Do you want to ask them for their date of birth, the company they work for, what suburb they live in? And if you do, you just go ahead and hit edit and change these values to true. Um, right now, I don't normally ask for those things. I have all that turned off. Uh, also here, you can, uh, if you require an email confirmation uh, when someone creates an order, you can set this to true. And if you require that uh, a customer accepts your terms and conditions of use, before they're allowed to purchase from your shopping cart, you can set that here. Uh, for instance, you can turn that to true, and they have to accept before they can purchase. And then for required email confirmation, if someone creates a new account, if it's just, if this is true, it's going to ask them to go to their email, get the account activation code, and then come back to the shopping cart and put that in so that they can uh, they can they can check out. I'm actually going to turn that off put that to false so that when someone creates an account, they can go right to the shopping cart and check out. And it's, it's just for for keeping the flow. Uh, you, you know, if you're trying to sell products online, you want to make it as easy as possible for, for your customers to check out. So normally I turn that off and just let them go proceed right to the shopping cart. Uh, next, we have uh, shipping and packaging. And basically, there's only a couple of things you would need to change here because depending on how you charge for shipping, um, your shopping cart is going to be set up differently. So can't cover all of the various options here, but uh, the only thing you would really be changing here is if you allow free shipping. So you would turn that on here, allow free shipping, turn it to true if it's on false, and then when do you offer free shipping? So for instance, we have here, if someone purchases items that um, accrue to $5,000 or more, then they would get free shipping. Uh, the shipping estimator, this is not the same estimator as, uh, for instance, if you if you have your shopping cart set up to work with FedEx or UPS. With FedEx, it actually your shopping cart actually would send the information to FedEx, and then return a value for the shipping. For UPS, the estimator is built in and is calculated uh, when someone has created an account and is on their way to to paying in your shopping cart. They will get the the UPS quote. Um, so. Unless you want them to see shipping estimations as soon as they click on products, then you can click here. But normally you don't want that. You want after they've added three, four, five items to the shopping cart, then you want to give them an estimate because it doesn't really make sense to give them estimates for every single item because then they might be led to believe that that's the shipping charge for all of their items. So I usually have that set to false. Uh, next is the product listing. And basically here, there's really not much to change because there, your shopping cart is basically going to be already set up. If you if you have items in your shopping cart, it's going to be set up already. And the only thing you might want to change here, and it's really a preference issue, is uh, the way your your items are listed. So if you click here on product listing, you can you can change your items from being listed in columns to being listed in rows. So if you click on that and you click on edit, you can change this to rows and your items will be listed down in a row rather than across in columns. So for instance, if we go here and we go to home, we'll take a look at how the items are set up. Let's click on one of these categories here. So for instance, if we click on art, and we see the items are in columns of two. So if we change that to row and hit update, and let's go back and let's refresh. And there we go. Now our items are listed one by one in rows. I kind of don't like the way that looks. I'm going to go ahead and change that back to columns. And change that to columns and update. Here is we have, uh, you can set the amount of columns. So if you wanted your items to be listed three across, um, 
rather than two, I have mine set to list two across. So there's only two items going across here. You can change that value here in the very last uh, product listing column. You can change that to three or four. But you know, you know, also it depends on the size of your images. Um, sometimes you can, if your site has a fixed width, you can exceed the fixed width and it'll just really mess up the way your shopping cart looks. Uh, here, the navigation, you can set it to be on top, bottom, or both. And what that navigation is, is I think I have it set on bottom here, but okay, there's actually, I don't have enough products in here to have a navigation. But basically, it'll have, if, if we had multiple pages of items, you'll have, you know, the page numbers here, one, two, three, four, five, and you can hit next. Um, and you can have that set to either top or bottom or both. And that's what you, you would set that here. Okay, next thing we're going to go uh, touch on is stock. Now, your shopping cart can, can calculate inventory for you. Um, so basically, every time you put in a new item, you'd have to go in there and put the amount of item you have in stock. Uh, and then also, if you um, add inventory, then you'd have to go back into your shopping cart and add the the new items to your inventory in the shopping cart and then you can have it so that when someone checks out and purchases that item it'll automatically reduce the amount of stock you have listed in your shopping cart so you can do that here so the values here check stock level if you have it set to false it's not going to check against inventory when someone is purchasing um, if you have it turned on it will check to make sure that the items in stock now if the items in stock you have the option to either allow checkout to true or not allow checkout. So basically, if you have this value to check stock turned on and there's zero, uh, and you have this allow checkout to false, it won't allow the customer to, to purchase that item. But you can have a check stock, let the customer know that it's not in stock by, uh, by right here, the, the mark product out of stock. You know, it'll tell them that it's out of stock, but then you can have allow checkout true and basically they'll be able to purchase an item that is out of stock and you can uh, sell the item and then you can call them and tell them where they're gonna when they're going to get it. And then if you want the shopping cart to keep track of the inventory, you can have it subtract stock uh, when they purchase that item or not. And that's really up to you. And then also uh, you can set your reorder level uh, to whatever you want it to be. So for instance, you want to reorder every time your item hits uh, value of five or three, you can set that here. Okay, and that's pretty much everything you, you would need to know under the configuration because the all of these other items are going to be already set up for you and you really don't want to mess with them um, because they can really mess up the way that your shopping cart is functioning. And these are all specific to your individual shopping cart and it's all done when your shopping cart is built. So basically, if you're going to change any of the values in here, you can change the values of the items that I just went over but you really don't want to mess with any of the other uh, items listed here. And that's pretty much it for the configuration of the shopping cart. See you in the next tutorial.